If you've ever tried to carve wood or whittle, as we called it back home, you know it's harder than it looks. In our next story, Miranda Cohen travels to Gatlinburg, where she meets an incredibly talented wood carver who's found the secret to revealing sculptures hidden away in wood. Michael Copas is in his element, chainsaw in hand, covered in shavings, discovering a hidden sculpture most of us can't quite yet see. I'm not intimidated by any design. It's kind of a fun thing to, to watch because, like I said, I do precision cutting. I'm cutting everything out right down to it at first and still like whittling it down. And I've developed these cuts over time. The master wood carver started carving caricatures at the Opryland theme park back in the early 70s. A fellow artist suggested he pack up his talent and move to the Great Smoky Mountains. And he has been here ever since. In his early days in Gatlinburg, he met a carving mentor who was impressed by his talent and was willing to pay for it. I said if I could carve a face in a half of a log, he'd buy every one of them. Copas started carving full time. He was inspired by the rustic beauty and wildlife in the mountains of East Tennessee. He started with bears, big cats, birds of prey, and much more. Just wanting to see something, you know, like if I decide I'm gonna carve an eagle in flight, it's because I want to see the carving. That's the only reason, is I just wanna see it. And astonishingly, the scale of his masterpieces are life-size, often carved from a single piece of wood. I carved the bear's head first, then I carved the owl, then I did the cat. Well, I do from tabletop to monumental pieces. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I think the tallest carving I've done was 32 feet. But when it's a single piece, you gotta keep the physics in mind because you don't wanna create a weak spot. He is now known as one of the true masters of the craft, and the Smithsonian Institute maintains a database of his work. Master wood carver Michael Copas says the art of wood carving is really the art of subtraction. He can walk up to a log like this and see what's in there. All he has to do is take away everything that doesn't belong. It's one thing to construct a piece, but as an art form, when it's pure subtraction, it's, uh, it has no rival. And it's kind of funny to think that you stop when you reach the image and it's like it's always been there. That tree grew for the purpose of being that sculpture. Michael Copas carves in polonia, sugar pine, white pine, sassafras, and walnut. The type of wood the master chooses depends on the scale and detail of the piece. While he can carve a complete bear in a few hours, it is the smaller increments of time when he finds himself in the zone, completely lost in his work. There's very few things in life that the seconds remain fresh. You know, we get caught in the minutes, get caught in the hours, and, and that's what I love about it. Every second is fresh, neither, you know, looking forward on prosperity or looking backward on posterity. His exquisitely detailed sculptures have a huge following, many in the hands of devoted private collectors. But thanks to social media, more and more people are getting the opportunity to see his art. And every time I start a carving, I put the pictures on Facebook every stage of the process. They sell as quick as I carve them. You know, the last thing I want to see is a bunch of my inventory. <laughs> For Copas, the real joy is in the carving itself. And the masterpieces he discovers in the wood, they're for someone else to enjoy. It's the journey that the pleasure's in, and when the carving's done, it's no big deal. No art is finished, it's only abandoned. 
Copas has had great success in these mountains, but he also found much more, a community of fellow carvers and artists and the camaraderie of kindred spirits. I love the friends I've made here because they've been in my life ever since I've been here. Michael Copas is at peace living in these hills, surrounded by his lifelong friends, doing exactly what he feels he was intended to do and carving out his legacy along the way. Well, it's what I was put here for. Uh, a painting is like looking out a window and a sculpture has presence in the room so they both, you don't feel so alone when you're around art.